Hi there. In this video, we are going to discuss about stage 3, which is concerned with conducting a proof of concept or POC to migrate risk and address unknown as early as possible when migrating to Power BI. This is our diagram that we are working on. Over here, you can clearly see that stage 2 and stage 3 can work in parallel. And in this stage, we are going to talk about POC or proof of concept. So before migrating your legacy systems to Power BI, you need to conduct a proof of concept so that you can prove that this system is going to work that you are going to design over here. A technical POC or proof of concept is helpful for validating assumptions. It can be done iteratively alongside solution deployment planning, which is our stage 2. The output from this stage is a Power BI solution that's narrow in scope address the initial open questions and is ready for additional work that we are going to do in stage 4 to make it production ready. Over here, you should remember that we don't intend for the POC to be disposable work. Rather, we expect it to be an early iteration of the production ready solution. That means it would be equivalent to your production ready solution. In your organization, you may refer to this activity as a prototype, pilot or mock-up or quick start, or maybe you call it MVP. Conducting a POC isn't always necessary and it could even happen informally. But please make sure that you connect this stage because it is going to be very important and it's going to help you to determine all the risks as well as it's going to address unknowns as early as possible. This stage is going to conduct in two parts. First, you have to set your POC goals and scope. And second would be handle differences in Power BI. Now let's get to know more about it. The very first comes set POC goals and scope. Whenever you are conducting a POC, your focus should be on all the items that you can see on your screen. That can be to verify your assumptions about how a feature works in Power BI, also, to educate yourself on the differences in how Power BI works compared with the legacy platform that you used to work. It can be validating initially understanding of certain requirements with subject matter expert. Or it can be regarding any types of calculations that you are performing in your legacy system but now you have to do all those calculations using DEX or data analysis expression. It can be regarding the testing or can be regarding the data refresh or verifying security configurations, how you are going to apply the security for different data objects in Chip Power BI or how you are going to distribute the reports, etc. So everything you have to define over here, you have to set your POC goals as well as the scope. To reduce complexity, keep a POC as narrow as possible in terms of scope. The second point is handle differences in Power BI. Power BI can be used as a model-based tool or as a report-based tool. It is a self-service BI tool by Microsoft. A model-based solution involves developing a data model, whereas a report-based solution connects to an already deployed data model. In Power BI, you can perform both. You can use Power Query to get the data from the different data sources, model using Power Pivot, and then you can start consuming the data, visualizing the data or doing the self-serve over there. However, in case of as a report-based tool, you can also consume the data which is already modeled. For example, you can get the data directly from Azure Analysis Service or you can also get the data directly from different databases, etc. So in that case, it can work as a report-based tool as well. Now, due to this extreme flexibility, there are some aspects about Power BI that may be fundamentally different from the legacy BI platform you are migrating from. And over here, you should consider three different points. The very first would be consider redesigning the data architecture. In this, if you are migrating from legacy BI platform that has its own semantic layer, then the creation of an import data set is likely to be a good option for you. Power BI functions best with the star schema table design. Therefore, if the legacy semantic layer is not a star schema, it is possible that some redesign may be required to fully benefit from the Power BI. Over here, there is another important tip for you. If you see the creation of lots of Power BI desktop files comprising a single imported table, it is usually an indicator that the design isn't optimal. 
Should you notice this situation? Investigate whether the use of shared data set that are creating using a star schema design could achieve it a better result. That means in most of the cases when you are repetitively using the same table into different reports, in that case please try to create one shared data set and consume the data into your different reports from it. Second point would be to decide how to handle dashboard conversions. In the BI industry, a dashboard is a collection of visuals that displays key metrics on a single page. However, in Power BI, a dashboard represents a specific visualization feature that can only be created in Power BI service. When migrating a dashboard from a legacy BI platform, you have mainly two choices only. The first would be the legacy dashboard can be created as a Power BI report. Second would be the legacy dashboard can be created as a Power BI dashboard. So, because Power BI dashboards are Power BI content type, refrain from using the word dashboard in the report or dashboard name because it's a completely a different thing. So, please make sure when you are using a name dashboard, you are using in the right context, not in the report context. That happens with most of the people. They even forgot what is a dashboard and what is a report in Power BI. Now the last point over here would be focus on the big picture when repeating visuals. You should know that every BI tool has its strengths and focus areas. And for this reason, the exact report visuals you depended on in a legacy BI platform may not have a close equivalent in Power BI. That means, suppose you are using X visual in your legacy system and now you want the same visual to work in Power BI. That may not be possible, but yes, of course, you would find a lot of alternatives to use that. So you should focus on the functionality rather than the same picture or same visualization. You should focus on the big picture that what that report means or what kind of information you are getting from the report rather than replicating it as it is into Power BI. Design can be different. Visualizations can be different, but the information that you are getting from that, it should be the same or it should be accurate. That's all you need to remember over here. In the next video, we are going to discuss about stage four, which would be to create content. For training and consultations, please visit our website www.biconsultingpro.com or if you have any question or concern, then please connect with us. You can directly email us at connect at biconsultingpro.com. And also, if you are over here for the very first time, please don't forget to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for all the latest updates and videos. See you in the next video.